Hello. Welcome to Matters of Decorum. I'm Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. Uh, once again, really glad to be getting comments on the videos and, uh, you know, like I said, to suggest something you'd like to hear me talk about, and uh, I'll probably end up being uh, on here at some point in time. As, as uh, last week's video, uh, you, uh, viewer Chinsey James, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, writes in part, uh, I would love to hear you talk about your favorite video gaming experiences. Um, and that brought one to mind. I've got a story. Uh, I've always got a story, but this one's a particularly fascinating story. Uh, I play online games with uh, one of my groups, the, the Warriors of Wednesday. Uh, we role play on Wednesday and uh, three or four nights a week, especially on the weekends, we are uh, doing something together online. Uh, we've done Conan Exiles. Uh, and Seven Days to Die, those are some of our, our favorites. Uh, this particular story comes from our first run on Imperion Galactic Survival. It's an early access game. You can find it on Steam. I highly recommend it. Uh, our last run ended abruptly because of a glitch uh, that I hope to get to fix pretty soon. But uh, it's a survival crafting game. Uh, you get together on a planet and harvest resources and work up the tech tree. Uh, until you can build better and better stuff. Eventually, you can build your own spacecraft, uh, get off the planet, and do some more trading and whatnot. Um, and there's a massive amount of exploration, lots of planets out there. Uh, it's a, a pretty good game. I like the ship construction. The characters are, are kind of fun. The advancement is uh, reasonable. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty good game. It's a pretty good, even for something in early access. And then they're working on it all the time. So it's uh, highly, highly recommended. Uh, we've been, where this particular story takes place, we've been playing for a couple of weeks and we've finally gotten off the planet and we're looking at the moon. And uh, we've noticed there's something dangerous up there, but we haven't gotten too close because, well, it's dangerous. So there's uh, four of us in individual spaceships. We've each built our own little, little spaceships and we've taken them to the moon. There, there's me, uh, there's my son Andrew, there's Al, and there's Wayne. Um, I think Josh was still either absent that evening or still doing stuff down to the main planet and they're not quite ready to leave yet. Happens. And we get to an area that, uh, well, it's the area with whatever was kind of dangerous in it, just trying to get a look see if we can find it from a distance, you know, do a little reconnaissance. And a hostile missile base pours all of our ships. Over the course of like a few minutes, um, I go down, Al goes down, Wayne goes down. Uh, Andrew has built his ship particularly tanky. My son is amazing at spaceship design. It uh, goes down last. We all go down within a couple of hundred meters of each other. We are pinned. If uh, we, we are there next to the wreckage of our crafts, uh, and if we poke our heads out, we get a rocket. Uh, the hostile faction is the Xerox. Um, that's their rocket base, and they've got enough rockets that if we poke our heads out, we get our head blown off by a rocket. It's kind of bad. We take assessment. My ship is done. Absolutely freaking done. There is there is no two pieces left next to each other. I grab what pieces of it I can salvage, which is a few raw materials and um, maybe one or two gadgets, uh, an oxygen tank or something. Nothing is going to be immediately useful to us. Al and Wayne are in much the same shape. Uh, their ships are sixty to ninety percent just wrecked, destroyed, cored through by rocket fire, and if they poke their head out at the wrong time, they get it blown off. It's, uh, it's, it's bad. Don't have a lot of tools on us. We have the basic survival tool. It is the first thing you can get in the game. It's a very poor firearm. It is a very poor resource gatherer and a very poor salvaging tool. Uh, you will get better tools as you progress to the tech tree. This is just a start shout. It's not meant to do any serious work. So we switch them over to resource gathering, and we start tunneling through the moon. 
Because again, we pop our heads up, we're done. And Andrew reports he is a little further away and he's got maybe 50, 60% of his ship left. Um, because of how well he builds his ships, um, most of his key components are intact. He's missing a couple of things, but uh, maybe, just maybe, we've got enough materials to kit bash together one decent ship and get us all back home. Maybe. It is stressful. We are constantly under fire. We poke our head up the wrong time, we're dead. Um, Wayne and Al and I, uh, Andrew starts salvaging what of his ship he can, trying to put it back together into something like a workable form. Wayne and Al and I meet in a central spot between the spots that we crashed. We dig out a little area where we can operate. We There are some materials we can't get on the moon. Uh, you can't make certain electronics and things without fibrous material. And that's wood fiber and that's plants. And there's no plants on the moon. That's back down to the planet. So we've only got uh, some of that stuff. We only got what we've got on us and what we can mine around us in raw moon rock, which is not much. I've got enough to build a portable constructor, a small device that can fabricate things for us. Uh, it could also be a, a, uh, an inventory for us, a box that we can throw things into that we can make a number of things we're going to need, including water and oxygen because we're on the moon and we're running out. Put the constructor down and we start throwing everything we've got into it. All the stuff we got from our ships, all of our materials, all of our, uh, just, just everything we can get. We harvest stuff out of the moon, but the, the rock that we got making the tunnels into the constructor. All of that can get broken down to base components, and maybe, just maybe, we can make what we've got. The, the, that constructor, that's all we can make. It requires components that we cannot get on the moon. We've got to hope. Really hope. We've got enough materials to put together the components Andrew's ship is missing so we can get home. Now, if you die in Empyrean, it's not the worst thing. You can, you'll can you spawn again either where, near where you ended up, or if you've got a base, you can spawn at your base. Uh, but that would have left our ships there. That would have left everything that we had gotten on the moon behind. And, and I don't think we had a clone tank back at our base. The best we could do is spawn again in that situation. And try and run for it and maybe get to the tunnels before a rocket took our head off. This is bad. So I access the uh, the constructor. I put all my materials into it. Start thinking about what I can build. Um, Wayne puts all of his constructors in the material. Start thinking uh, one person at a time can get in the constructor. Because um, while you're in there, you 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 are the only person who can access that inventory. Uh, Al accesses the constructor, puts all his materials in, starts building a couple of things. And then I hear the words that fill me with fear. That's Al saying, hang on, guys, i got to go to dinner. Between him saying that and the time it took me to say, Al, make sure you get out of the inventory of the constructor or we can't get into it, Al had left for dinner while his character was still in the inventory. Every last bit of materials we can use to fix the ship and get home is in that inventory. Everything that we can use to make oxygen or have water is in that inventory. And we can't access it. Wayne and I are helpless to do anything but stare at Al's character looking at the constructor and be unable to actually access it or any materials or anything. We are boned. Our only hope is that maybe, somehow, we can get Al's character far enough away from the constructor that he will exit its inventory and we can access it and work. That didn't work. We dug a big, we, we tunneled and dug a big hole under Al, dropped him into it completely. And no, no, he was still part of the, he was going to be in the inventory while he's on the planet. That That's it. 
until he came back from dinner, however long that was going to take, and exited the inventory voluntarily. So we we may have buried him uh, with some with what we managed to mine out of the ground to bury him. We we were able to put that on top of him, not because we thought it would break the connection, but because it made us feel better at the moment. Things were a little stressful. Wayne and I keep harvesting what we can, and we both die. Suffocation, we run out of oxygen more than once. Run out of oxygen, die, spawn near the site, run for the hole, run for the trenches, because if we can make it into the tunnel, we won't get our head shot off. Get our head shot off a couple of times, eventually make it back in there, make it back, start harvesting more rock so we can break it down. If we ever manage to get back into the constructor, Al comes back. Hey, did you guys bury me? Why, no, Al, we have no idea what you're talking about. Al leaves the constructor. We managed to put the red, the materials we've mined since then back in the constructor, break them down. We start getting components down. We dig a hole straight to Andrew's ship so that we can get to the, the little safe spot that he's worked out. And we start throwing our components on it, extra oxygen, some thrusters that he lost, uh, a couple of computer components, uh, everything that it's going to need to get off of the moon and back into the gravity well of the planet. Uh, we cobble together some open seats because we don't have enough to make closed seats, and there isn't enough room inside. Andrew's design for that ship is super compact. There was barely room for one pilot in there, much less any passengers. We mounted seats to the outside as long as we were we weren't going to have to worry about re-entry, so it would be uncomfortable and weird, but we could do it. Bolted seats on. I and uh, I processed enough fuel to get us off the moon. We got oxygen in the tanks for the uh, for the ship, so that we can make it. The moment we lift off, he is in the arc of fire of the missile base. He's going to have to not only lift off with most of his maneuvering thrusters missing, but he's going to have to lift off and not get hit by the Cyrax base. Because if that rocket hits the ship, it's going down. If the rocket hits any of the three guys riding on the outside of the ship, they're done. Being in one of those unarmored, completely open seats, looking out onto space, and seeing rockets coming in our direction. That was an experience. We lift. We lift off. Andrew does some flying miracles. He has given me a piece of advice more than once because he plays an awful space engineers and Eve online when it was around, uh, plays a lot of these kinds of games. And the advice he has given me is. Learn to fly on a broken ship. Learn to fly with a ship that doesn't work well. Because that way, if you're in a ship and it gets crippled, you'll at least be able to get it someplace so you can fix it. Great advice, and this event is why I listened to that advice. Because he got us out. He managed to get the ship out of the way of the missiles and punch it for orbit. And we left the moon. I've never yelled so loud. It, it, it was the genuine, you know, we whooped and we hollered. We, we dove back into the planet's gravity well, got into atmosphere, and went back to our base to, so that we could restore his ship completely and then rebuild ours, because ours were gone. Well, little pieces we were able to salvage were in Andrews. Now, the thing about Empyrean, that, that that was a scenario I, as a game master, would have loved to run. I love running disasters and rescues and recoveries, and I wrote mechanics for the victory system specifically so that you could have events like this. I love that kind of situation in a game. The Empyrean engine, 
the 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 game engine itself, the game, allows for things like that to happen. But that wasn't scripted. That wasn't something that was set down by the designers. The devs didn't design the scenario to put it in front of us. That happened organically. That just occurred. Every step of the way, it was either us sticking our nose into something we shouldn't have, uh, or catastrophes of circumstance, like now going to dinner. Sorry, y'all, I know I keep harping on it, but for God's sake. Um, and all at the same time, this story, I got this, this absolutely amazing story of tragedy and destruction and desperation and eventual triumph. I got emotions from that. I got feels for being under stress and situation getting worse. Not being able to poke my head out to look at the sky to see where things were at. Just wanted to get shot at. All adrenaline, all stress. You couldn't write a story that good. Um, and it just happened. The, uh, I think, I think Imperial is written in Unity. No problematic at this moment, but still. Um, and it's an, you've got a lot of open world sandbox elements. There are factions that are uh, out there that can be opposed to you. Some of them that will definitely be opposed to you. Xyrax being one of them. And there are points of interest and occasionally events that happen. But there's no through line story. There's no meta plot really that's happening. It's just, you know, you're building, you're building up your base and your ships. And you're going out and exploring. And seeing how much of the universe you can, you can catalog. Amazing. Love that. But this, um, this ordeal we went through, I've played a lot of Bethesda games, Fallout of games, the Skyrim, Starfield, which I'm not happy with. I'll talk about that later in another video. Um, and while they have scripted a number of fascinating events, and they're, they're, they're in there, they're, 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 they're the sequence of events is in there, how people are reacting to you, um, what's going to happen, all scripted, all in there. Maybe a couple of random elements of people showing up and shooting stuff up, but for the most part, it's written. Nothing hit me as hard as down on the moon, cored out by a rocket base, having to rebuild one ship out of the remnants of four, trying to get everyone home. That's that's one of my favorite gaming experiences of all time because that was when my computer game was the closest to I've ever gotten to a tabletop game. Not the computer games I've played haven't tried to emulate the tabletop experience, but there's a certain organicness to it. A certain this was this just happened. This was a tr this is going to happen to anyone, but it just happened. Not because the devs wrote that sequence of events, but because we got hit by rockets, and one of us had built a really really tough ship, and we barely managed to cobble it together. Not because the devs led us through a sequence of events where we'd hit a couple of buttons and everything would be fixed and we could move on, but because we fought for it. Because we applied all the skills that our characters have been learning and put them together into a fighting chance. That's all. A fighting chance to get this ship and what little stuff we had back home. Hmm. Cannot get enough of that stuff. Absolutely cannot. Um, so yeah, thank Thank you very much for your comment, uh, Chinsey James, and thank you, thank you for the kind words. Uh, I uh, 
my, my, my voice is going out a little bit, so I might not be quite the public speaker tonight, but I'm trying. Um, keep it lubricated. Uh, I don't play, I'm not as dedicated a computer game player as I once was. Uh, I still got some stuff. I'm, I'm probably going to do some seven days to die content on this channel because I really enjoy that game. And I think I've got some stuff to contribute. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was that was my all-time favorite video game experience. All-time favorite. From, from my Atari 2600 to this very moment, that story is at the top. Because I love me a story. Well, thank you for following me along in this particular ramble. Um, uh, I'm Scott Corum. This is what has mattered to me. I will see you next time on the next Matters of Decorum. And now over to Uncle Drac for the outro. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy this video, give it a thumbs down. Feedback is feedback. If there's any other topics you would like to hear Scott talk about, uh, questions you'd like him to answer, subjects you'd like to him to cover, please leave a comment down below. He will love getting your comment and you will love leaving him one. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, why not? This channel is awesome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you do, you might also want to hit the little notification bell so you're alerted when these videos become available. If you would like to support this channel in a more substantial manner, we invite you to hit us up at the Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash scottcorum and consider donating. Absolutely anything helps, and allows us to create better content more often. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.